Welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, today we're going to be doing a review of three different uh, foam adhesives. How our foam factory has been gracious enough to send me for review, um, free of charge, um, a sample of each of their uh, foam adhesives. They sell um, a couple different varieties, they have different properties, and so what I'd like to do today is introduce you to them, show you some of the properties that they have, and then we're going to do some experiments on them to test their strength and to test how they affect cutting through foam, as oftentimes, at least I do, I've assembled large blocks of foam, and then I'm going to be carving them, and depending on the kinds of glues you use, it can affect the speed of cut, which can then create um, you know, deeper cuts in certain areas based on the blade getting stuck and overheating, things like that. So we're going to take a little look at these on some uh, polystyrene expanded bead uh, foam and uh, see how they hold up. So the, the glues we're going to be looking at today are their foam fusion. Um, foam fusion is their, I believe, their original adhesive. It's a PVA type based glue. Um, on the site, it mentions that it is a non-solvent um, evaporating you know, type adhesive. Um, one of the benefits of that is that if it's not trying to reduce um, a solvent, that in between large areas of adhesion, you know, say in between the layers of this block, um, oftentimes what happens is in the interior, this will remain wet for a prolonged period of time. So um, I was a, a little skeptical of that, but we're going to try to see if we can see after 24 hours whether it's dried in the interior, uh, because it does appear to be, um, uh, you know, like a PVA type glue. But if you've seen, I have done a review of foam fusion on its own in the past, and it definitely has a stronger bond to foam than um, typical white glue. Uh, so um, it is a step up from white glue for sure. They also, um, and it seems to me to be relatively recent, I pay attention to their site every now and then, and I didn't notice this before, they have a new adhesive called Styrogoo. Now Styrogoo is a clear adhesive, it's got a pretty heavy viscous consistency, and um, one of the um, things that this is supposed to, um, you know, give you as a benefit is, um, uh, not fast drying, What's where is it, it's written on here somewhere, um, oh, right there in big letters, um, instant tack. And that's one of the problems when you're using, um, uh, you know, these types of glues like the foam fusion or white glue or wood glue is that it's a long time to bond. And as I've mentioned before in some of my previous videos, you know, pieces can shift over time. Um, and if you want quick assembly, you're going to want something with a faster tack. So Styrogoo might be the option for that. The third product that they sent me is um, a spray adhesive. Now, for those of you who've worked with foam for many years, you know you cannot use aerosol sprays on them as they eat into the foam. Shelby 277 is a um, foam safe spray adhesive. I've done a quick test of it on my own. Um, does appear to be safe. Um, they say even holds up over time as some adhesives might look safe up front and then later erode the foam. So. Um, I'm not going to be able to assess its long-term performance, you know, say like over storage of a year, you know, after you've assembled a piece with it, but we can definitely take a look at it today. Um, one of the things that this does uh, is that it gives you a very fast bond. Um, it's 30 seconds to give you a reasonably working performing bond and it performs very well on thin coats. And that's going to be one of the things we're going to look at for um, how it affects cutting as, you know, thicker layers of adhesives will create longer burn times for your hot wire to get through. So let's see how they stack up. So since I've been working on the castle project, I've had quite a bit of this two inch thick styrofoam in the shop. I have a lot of scraps of it. I'll be using you know, plenty of it for the, the future work on the castle, but I decided to sacrifice some of it for this test. I've tried to cut these into regularly sized square blocks. These are about five inches in uh, diameter. Uh, um, diameter, five inches on a side, that's a square. And uh, each of the layers is two inches thick. And then what I've done for each of the different products, Fusion, Styrogoo, Shelby, and Wood Glue, is I've tried to apply an equal amount of glue to each of these pieces. Now I can't necessarily do that with the Shelby 227 because it's a spray adhesive and it applies in a very different manner. So I've just given this one side really good coat and what I'm going to do is show you a picture of the application so you can see how much I applied and in what manner. So, 
What we're going to do for the test, I've thought of trying to test this out in, in uh, three main ways. One will be a um, a cut that transverses the entire seam. So the blade, I'm going to be using the um, Hotwire Foam Factory's freehand router. It's the only hot wire blade that I have that's big enough to accommodate this foam. And one of the nice things is, is it has a permanent on-off switch, which, which I should turn on to let it heat up. And this way, what I'm going to do is hang it and then time how long it takes to pass through the foam before it makes a complete cut using gravity only to pull the hot wire blade through it. This way I can eliminate me pulling through the blade at a differential force and hopefully can get something that's you know relatively easy to compare. The um, timer I'll use is this very old-fashioned stopwatch. Isn't that great? Um, each of these marks is in uh, six tenths of a second. So one is a six is six seconds. Two is um, yeah is uh, twelve seconds. Three is eighteen seconds, etc. To go around, isn't that nice? Look at that. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use this um, to get some kind of a rough comparison. If the numbers are close enough that I can't tell the difference on them, then it won't matter really to our application. So. All of these blocks were assembled yesterday, uh, late afternoon, so they've had approximately 24 hours to dry. They had a five pound um, weight on them, each of them over the same amount of time, and I just removed those weights um, a couple hours ago. So, let's give it a try. So since I only have two hands, and I actually have three things to operate, the foam, the knife, and the, uh, the router, I mean, and the stopwatch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the stopwatch, and then try to start the cut at the two, two on the stopwatch dial here, which would be 12 seconds in. That should give me time to get ready. And I'm going to try to cut an even slice off of each. This is going to be a little tricky. Um, it won't affect this experiment, but will affect the second one. So this is an approximation, right? You know, um, just to really get to see if we see any significant differences. I haven't done this before, so I have no idea. So we'll start the clock. And when it gets to the two... Oh no, shoot. Oh, I'm gonna have to guide it just a little bit. All right, whew, that's a little sloppy. Uh, that's 12 seconds. Mm, I don't know, this experiment might not be very useful in terms of data, but we'll see, we'll play with it. Hot. Uh, oh, actually. Uh, that went through a little faster. It looked like about 12 seconds. Here you can see the cross cut of that. Um, about the same. And lastly, on my janky experiment here, we'll try the Shelby. This is a little bit janky, for sure. Uh, about the same. All right, well, since my experiment doesn't really um, in any way uh, have a very good control and they're all within a margin of say two seconds each, maybe three seconds each, I'd say they're all cutting about the same actually in terms of speed of cut. I won't measure this um, one with any timer, but let's just see as we go backwards through them. Well, we'll start again with the first one. Here's the wood glue, the first cut. And we'll pass it through this way and see how much it gets hung up on the glue layer. Oh, and there it is on the glue layer. A little pause. And 
And you can see, you know, it's actually burning a little bit of the glue, um, but didn't really hang up too much. Let's try, let's try the foam fusion. Oh, definitely hung up there. There it goes. All right, we may do this. Let's do that one more time. It's definitely hanging on that glue layer for sure. Okay, and there you can see one of the effects when it hangs. See how it burns in a little bit of a deeper cut? Um, that can happen when you're carving by hand as well. All right, so this is a foam fusion. I'm gonna go back. Let's do the wood glue one more time because uh, quite frankly, the application is so uneven, it's possible it could hit a, a bump in it, you know, where I had a blob of extra glue and that could really affect it. Yeah, see, see the wood glue is hanging there. Ooh, quite a bit actually, there it goes. Hmm. So I'd say, you know, I don't know, fairly comparable. All right, wood glue here, we'll set that aside. Let's do the styro. Oh, is this gonna fit? Uh, you know what, I'm just gonna shave this down a little bit here. Let's just shave this down. The other ones weren't quite this big. All right, let's see how the styro goo does. That's a pretty clean pass, actually. That's a pretty nice pass. Let's try that one more time. Coming up on the glue layer. Oh, almost no hiccup. No. Oh. That's pretty nice, actually. And lastly, let's take a look at the Shelby. Oh, yeah. I would say it didn't even really notice that there was a glue layer there. Let's try that one more time. Almost no resistance from the Shelby. In fact, uh, you can't really, you know, it's hard to even discern the seam there. Uh, very nice because of the, I suspect because the layer is so thin. And I apologize for the lighting problem. I just realized I had the fluorescence on. That's what causes that waving motion in my camera. So I just turned that off. So hopefully this will be a little clearer. So for the last thought is um, trying to separate them and see if the interiors are still curing. Um, normally you can see it from a cut edge when you cut into the interior that there's still some that has not cured. But it is a little hard to tell with these cuts. So let's see if we can open it. This is the wood glue, by the way. There we go. Aha! See what I mean? All of this adhesive, this is not fully cured yet. Um, so this would require more time uh, before it would fully cure as air has to come in through the edges to finally cure the interior. That could take days, weeks, months maybe perhaps with a large piece. Um, you can see how it has pucked some of the uh, foam out on both that sides. Um, and you know, I mean it was certainly holding fairly well, but I wouldn't say um, that it had reached maximum strength because the adhesive was still wet. Let's try the foam fusion. Mm. Ooh. Okay. Foam fusion. Uh, now this is much harder to see. There you go. Um, so the foam fusion also still wet in the interior. Uh, but I would say um, a little bit tackier, actually. I'd say this is a, um, a little bit more cured than the wood glue, but that's an opinion. I don't have any real number to back that up, um, but I'm going to say that as an impression, slightly more cured in the interior. What I'm really curious about is the styro goo. Let's see if we can open that up. <laughs> um, well... Um, that's, uh, 
Ah, get out. Okay. Uh, styro glue uh, permanently bonded, uh, such that the bond is stronger than the rest of the foam. Uh, and that's a pretty significant improvement over the other two products, I have to say. That's uh, nice to see. Plus, it has a fast tack time. I'm liking that product. And this is uh, Shelby 277. All right. Let's take a look at that. Uh, definitely some pucking. Quite a bit of pucking. Feels uh, fully cured on the interior list. Doesn't feel very tacky. Maybe just slightly tacky, but overall, I'd say um, pretty, pretty firm cure, and um, probably um, the strongest um, uh, besides the Styro Goo. If I had to rank them. Um, so if you've stayed with me in my uh, crazy experiments here, um, I think there are a few things to learn from it. Um, first is that the um, you know, I think in ascending order of um, sort of strength, I think I would go with the wood glue as the weakest, the foam fusion is better, the um, Shelby adhesive uh, 227 spray adhesive, and then finally the foam fusion. I think that um, all of them are relatively easy to cut depending on the thickness of the layer of glue you've applied. I don't notice a significant difference between any of them. So you can be safe in knowing if you apply a thin layer of glue, you should be able to cut through them all very easily with the noteworthiness that the Shelby 277 ensures a thin, even layer as that's the only way you can really apply it. Um, on a cost basis, um, the wood glue is the cheapest by far. Um, the foam fusion and the styro glue um, both retail for, these are a 16 and a 17 ounce bottle. They retail for about um, uh, $12 each, roughly, $11.99, $10.99, something like that. Uh, I think so. 11, I think it's, well, it might be 11 Anyway, within the 11 and $12 range. Um, and um, lastly, the um, uh, Shelby uh, 277 is probably the most expensive. While the can still comes in at the $11 price mark, um, you're getting um, probably less out of the can than you would out of one of the bottles as you're going to have overspray, wastage, and some of the can is filled with propellant as well. Uh, final thoughts on the uh, products. Uh, I think that the um, foam fusion is um, interestingly labeled as um, solvent free and I think it depends on how you define the word solvent. Um, this is an evaporative uh, compound as it's not a, you know, a two-part resin where you get a chemical reaction uh, but I'm sure what they mean is um, solvents that will dissolve foam um, so it's foam safe but um, so are wood glues. Um, the styro goo, though, um, uh, again, it's it. I, one would say the same thing about it. Yet it does seem to have dried in the interior within 24 hours, uh, much more effectively than the foam fusion. Um, maybe more effectively than any of the other uh, three products we've looked at. So, um, really, really impressed by the styro goo, and this is going to be um, my go-to for most projects going forward in the future. I think. Um, it does say, as a final comment on application, thinking about that, um, the foam fusion is going to give you the most working time, uh, as it takes quite a while to set up. So if you need to reposition things, you could reposition them even perhaps an hour later if you needed to, pry up the edges, the interior will be okay. You could reset it if you've made a mistake. The um, Styro Goo gives you um, less working time. It does say fast tack, and it does give a pretty firm bond, but you can adjust it um, immediately afterwards so it's not like say using a, a super glue where you get an instant bond and it's immovable um, you do get a little bit of working time with this and probably the least amount of working time you're going to get is so if you're looking for the fastest tack you're really going to want to go with the Shelby 277 um, it does say um, fast tack and but it also does say um, I don't know if you'll be able to see that I'm not going to show it to you it does say it's repositionable 
um, and I have found that when I applied it to these um, foam cubes for this test, they were slightly out of alignment, and even without lifting it off to replace it, I was able to just gently kind of goo it into place, and so it does have some play, but this sets up pretty quickly compared to the rest, um, and so if you're looking for large applications, large surface areas, and you want to get rapid assembly, um, this is a fantastic product. Hopefully you found some of this information helpful. It's not as quite a clean experimental run as I was hoping it would be, but I think there's still something to be learned from it. Um, if you, uh, I want to thank the Foam Factory for sending me these products for review. It's going to be helpful for my work going forward, and I hope it will be for yours as well. Um, if you haven't been to the Foam Factory site, you should definitely take a look. Um, they specialize in hot wire tools and products to be used with foam, and uh, so far um, everything I've received from them has been very impressive and definitely suited for the uh, hobby war gamer and the terrain uh, maker. So um, take a look over there. I'll put a link down below in the description as well. Uh, if you have any questions about these products, though, feel free to leave comments and questions down below. I'm happy to answer them. If there's anything I've left out or other things that you'd like to see tested, I could do that. And um, I'll probably be mentioning some of these products in the um, future videos that I do as I have some projects I'm working on right now. And I'll be using some of these, and I'll definitely be using the StyroGoo a lot more. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Keep an eye on the channel. I'll be back with a video real soon.